Well, I want to welcome everyone to Careers in the Liberal Arts. My name is Ronald Davidson. I am the director of the Humanities Institute here at Fairfield University and the chair of Religious Studies. This panel is in some part pulled, pulled together to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the National Endowment for the Humanities, as it was from a 1983 NEH Challenge Grant that the Humanities Institute was born. But the primary impetus is to rectify a distorted narrative in the United States today. Anyone in higher education today has heard this distinctive narrative about the decline of the liberal arts, particularly the humanities. We are told that rewarding and remunerative careers is not, are not possible for liberal arts majors who are condemned to indentured servitude for low paying positions for the rest of their lives <laughs> as a result of their choice of majors. Finding your passion in English or the study of religion is in this storyline a self-inflicted dead end. Many of us in the liberal arts have had students come to us, sometimes in tears, saying that their parents won't pay for education unless they graduate with a degree in business. It would be foolish not to understand student concerns. Even when President Obama expressed on January 30th, 2014, that he thought art history was a poor undergraduate major, and then candidate Marco Rubio on November 10th of last year, indicated that we need more welders than philosophers. Both were giving voice to a culturally approved meme that was in fact false, which Obama later acknowledged and which Rubio did not. We might observe that 6% of the 10% of the wealthy Americans were art history majors. That philosophers out of college make in fact much more than welders, both being still underpaid and that data indicate that liberal arts graduates will make approximately the same lifetime earnings as business graduates. Even more, we might observe that the critical skills of the liberal arts cannot be easily outsourced. However, right now, software startup Kinsho and Goldman Sachs have developed software that may replace financial analysts. And one estimate is that Goldman will employ one third fewer financial analysts within a decade as a result of this software. By this standard, we may wonder if a business degree does not face its own employment <coughs> challenges beyond the narrative given. In distinction, many of the jobs that you will engage in the next 10 to 20 years have yet to exist. And of the ones that are still present, a 2013 paper out of Oxford suggests that, quote, occupations that involve complex perception and manipulation of tasks creative intelligence tasks and social intelligence tasks are unlikely to be substituted by computer capital over the next decade or two. It is these soft critical skills that are the focus of the liberal arts and provide an advantage in human capital as our panelists themselves can attest. Their stories and their careers also affirm that the ideas of one going through a straight path through life is less true than is often assumed. Now I would like to introduce the panelists whose longer bios are available for you to read. Ashley Allen here in the uh, bow tie is <laughs> the only bow tie, is uh, president of 24-7 Wall Street. He was a religious studies and philosophy double major. He went into sales and then law and then ended up starting one of the more important business news sites in the country. Jen D. Simone, raise your hand, Jen, is talent acquisition recruiter, corporate finance at NBC Universal. Jen is a psychology major and worked previously in corporate recruiting. James Martin, James, would you hold your hand up there, is deputy editor, ESPN. A politics major, he won the award for distinguished research in the humanities when he was here, was accepted into the best graduate programs in American politics for a PhD, but declined, decided to go into a career in sports journalism instead. Matt Ryder, Matt, yeah. Matt's right here next to me, is senior consultant, IBM Digital Operations. Matt was a double major in Chinese studies and philosophy. After his Fulbright in China, he went on to a master's degree from Tufts and again from Harvard. Lauren Short, down there, next to the last, 
is Vice President of Corporate Marketing and National Director of Retail Marketing for First Republic Bank. She was a double major in art history and psychology and previously worked for Tiffany and & Company and Christie's Fine Arts in Events and Marketing. And finally, Stephanie Oliver, newly minted, is ex account executive with Indeed. She was a communications major and now communicates with small to medium-sized clients in the Northeast and Central U.S. as part of Indeed sales. So I would now like to invite our panelists, beginning right here with Matt, to take a few minutes to discuss how their own stories and the place of the liberal arts in their lives and in their careers beyond Fairfield. Matt. Okay, uh, so I'll tip the hat. Uh, I am incredibly impressed by this panel, I just have to say, uh, and I can only hope that my story holds some water amongst theirs. Uh, so, Put simply, uh, I came out of Fairfield with a dual major of Chinese studies and philosophy, uh, surrounded by peers with the question of, now what? Uh, and my answer was a one-way plane ticket to China. From there, I uh, improved my language skills, I applied and got a Fulbright Research Fellowship, I then turned that into research uh, and further uh, development work that then put me in New York working in politics and leading larger scale development projects in, uh, in New York under the Gates Foundation. And from there, it brought me to Harvard and Tufts where I did dual masters and ultimately found me in a place where you know, I really employ each of these phases or spaces in my uh, previous life, each of these kind of sprints, if you would think of it, uh, again and again now in business uh, strategy consulting. So as I arrive at a new client, as I see the opportunities ahead of me, I'm right back with Professor Davidson, I'm right back on the road in China, I'm once again in a school in New York, and I'm thinking about a laundry list of opportunities, of whatever risks we're approaching, um, and what the best solution might be. Uh, in each of these times or spaces, I kind of knew that this in the end would have to come from me and that I would have to not only own this, but I would have to ultimately see it through to the end. Um, you know, when I developed my own independently designed studies major, uh, I knew that uh, I would have to, in every sense, justify this along the way, not only at Fairfield, but afterwards. And I think that a lot of those lessons, as well as the skills that were developed, um, have, I would say, paid dividends throughout my career, throughout each sprint, put simply. Okay. Uh, Ashley, would you like to uh, talk about uh, your, your story on uh, liberal arts? And I'd like to start out for, by apologizing. Um, some things don't change. Apparently, there's homework. Uh, <laughs> I'm not very good at homework. Uh, I never have been. Uh, I was supposed to prepare a statement, so if this is muddled, it's entirely uh, Dr. Davidson's fault. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, I, um, I had a really terrific education at, at Fairfield. I, I had a, a number of wonderful professors, and I, I benefited from the kind of rich liberal arts tapestry that you guys are now all enjoying. Um, I. Uh, was naive and didn't do what I thought was good for my career, or what might be my career, but rather what I was passionate about. Um, I, I thought I liked philosophy because I would studied a lot of classics in high school, and so that was my first uh, uh, major, and then I took a class, an intro to religious studies class with Dr. Davidson, and I realized that um, that a lot of what drew me to philosophy, namely this, this idea of, of creating schemas of, of kind of relationships between ideas was born out in, in religious studies. And in addition to that, you had these really awesome stories about gods with many arms. And if any of you have had a class with Dr. Davidson, it gets much richer than that. Um, and, and so I say that to you to say, um, I, I feel as though I, I benefited from that education in so far as uh, I was bit by the bug of learning very early and throughout my career, uh, what has driven me more than anything has been a desire to do uh, things that kind of similarly engage me intellectually. Um, 
I had the benefit of doing an internship where I was uh, running um, a, um, a small ad sales operation for um, an online um, futures news site back when the capital I internet was just becoming a thing, so they gave it to an intern to do. So I, I had that to fall back on when I didn't have any jobs when I graduated, so I kind of did that. And um, while it was a sales job initially, I, um, uh, I, I quickly kind of took to the job the same way that um, Fairfield had kind of uh, taught me to, which is looking at what the job entailed in a greater sense, and, and that meant understanding how advertising works and how technology works and how the biz competing business interests are um, for uh, that particular industry. And that is, I think, a leitmotif which has carried me throughout my other jobs, uh, which is um, finding things that you're excited about and then probing them as deeply and passionately as you can is, is really been a lock and key for me uh, professionally. Um, it has made going to work uh, ceaselessly interesting. Um, it, 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 is, it presents uh, uh, challenges uh, because um, if you're always trying to learn something new, it's very hard to be bored. Um, and I'm, I'm speaking vagaries here, so I'm giving you nothing concrete. Um, what else can I say? So uh, the current job I'm in, uh, I, I started out as general manager of uh, a business news site, I was a first employee, which made it very exciting. So I was responsible for um, printer toner uh, and coffee um, and um, making sure computers uh, were working. Uh, but, I, but I also had other jobs like growing the business and uh, ultimately understanding editorial direction. And uh, in this job where, where I find myself now, um, it is a deeply analytical job. Uh, we use a great deal of statistics and mathematics and economics. We've designed a number of internal systems to uh, doing analysis uh, programmatically, uh, which uh, economics lends itself to, uh, econometrics, if anyone's taking any economics classes. Um, and I say that because I never knew uh, when I started out as a philosophy religion major or when I was in ad sales or when I was a technology uh, sales guy that I would be doing economic analysis or uh, visualizations or writing programs and what led me here was a passion to learn, uh, being excited about what I did uh, and you know being uh, not smart enough to know that I didn't know what I was doing so I kept on trying. So thank you. Yeah, James. Uh, <clears throat> hi uh, I'm James. Um, I was in some PhD programs after I left Fairfield U, um, realized they were all math, and uh, got out of that fairly quickly. Uh, went into journalism, had no plans, uh, just started writing for the New York Times, freelancing wherever I could. One lesson I learned was don't, don't think any job's beneath you. Take whatever you can and do whatever you can, because it will lead to better things. Um, I then moved to China as well, um, not for academic reasons, I fell in love. So I, I moved across the world. Uh, but there I did work. I got some freelance opportunities. I worked for some newspapers. I did some tourism association stuff. Uh, I didn't know the country, but they gave me the job, so you take it, right? Um, came back and was still fairly confused, but kept looking around to see what I could do. Uh, got a job at Tennis Magazine, Tennis.com, and then that segued into my true passion, which is football, or as most people call it, soccer. Um, and I've been with ESPN covering uh, football for about seven years now. Uh, just things that I learned that I thought I could impart from my education at Fairfield U. I mean, Fairfield U makes you smart. I mean, that's just the bottom line, and you'll notice that when you're in the workplace, um, whether you're dropping uh, philosophy quotes or just anything you want, you're going to stand apart, trust me. The things come back that you don't even realize you remembered. Um, but the other things you learn, besides the book smarts, that I can see now is all the stuff you're not necessarily aware of learning when you're here, which is handling deadlines, pressure, how to prioritize things, how to deal with difficult professors. Not, not, not him, by the way. Best professor ever, thank you. But, um, but you will encounter all that sort of thing. You'll encounter dealing with groups of people and having to do projects, and you might not necessarily get along with them or agree with their approaches, and you're gonna have to find ways to compromise and find ways through a project. And these are all skills you're not necessarily 
cognizant of when you're here. But when you get into jobs where you're dealing with people that treat work as sort of a Lord of the Flies with ties, you realize that you need to have those skills. And Fairfield U has given me those skills in, in spades. And that's probably the only reason I actually have a paycheck these days. So that's why I have to say. Stephanie. Um, well, as some of you know, I recognize a lot of you out there. Um, I am a very recent graduate. I graduated this past May. Uh, I was a communications major with a marketing minor. Uh, so my story is not quite as long as everyone sitting around me, but uh, it's fairly new and I'm very excited to be in the workplace now. Um, right now I am working at Indeed.com as an account executive in sales. So uh, my story kind of began right here back on campus um, in one of the career fairs started out, um, had an internship at Enterprise Rent-A-Car, which led to my next internship at Indeed, um, which led to my full-time position. So uh, I really attribute a lot of my success so far to Fairfield itself. Um, and I have found that working in my position, even though it is in sales, I am incorporating a lot of my education, whether I realize it or not, on a daily basis. Um, I work mainly with clients in, uh, as Dr. Davidson said, in the uh, central US and as well as the Northeast. So one thing that I have uh, come to find out is that everybody's different, uh, whether it be in different parts of the US, different parts of the world, and I am pulling a lot of the knowledge and uh, conversations that I've had in classes and even just conversations among friends, kind of recalling on them from um, you know past experiences here and finding that, you know, organizational communication, probably one of the most important things that I ever learned at Fairfield, figuring out how the structure of companies are and how they work and, you know, relating to people based off of their specific needs because everybody is different, businesses are different. Um, so I'm very excited to see kind of how uh, Fairfield education incorporates more into my life. This is just the beginning for me, so I'm very excited to see kind of where I go from here. And um, I know that Fairfield experience is truly going to contribute more and more to my, my work life moving forward. Jen. Hi everyone, I'm Jen. I graduated in 2008 with a degree in psychology. Um, as some of you may recall, uh, 2008 wasn't exactly the greatest year to graduate and find a job. <laughs> um, so, you know, at the time, I, I honestly truly did not know what I wanted to do. I had interned in schools. I, I thought I was, wanted to be a guidance counselor, and I actually interned at Fairfield Prep. Um, when I graduated, I decided that I think I, I, want, I, I knew I wanted to move to New York and experience New York life and, and work in a corporation. So I just started networking and going on interviews and learning about different industries. And, I, you know, I ended up taking the first job that I got. I, I ended up at News Corporation and ad sales. And I thought it sounded glamorous and exciting and a, a brand name organization. Little did I know it was the absolute worst job for me. And, um, you know, I think you need to take those steps, first of all. It's really hard to know 100% what you want to do at the beginning of your career, but just because you end up somewhere at the beginning that's not right, if anything, it's a learning experience. So that's exactly what it was for me. Um, I, from there, you know, it, it wasn't the right fit, so I ended up taking an assistant job until I could figure out truly what I wanted to do. Um, I networked quite a bit. I met with different people at different organizations. I connected with alumni, whatever I can do just to get in front of people and learn a little bit more. Um, I ended up sitting down with one of my dad's, um, his HR partner. He, he works in banking, and I sat down with her to learn a little bit more about human resources because I thought that was a direction that I wanted to go. And she said, you know, Jen, I actually started off in HR and recruiting. Um, it was a really good opportunity to get my foot in the door, and, and I learned quite a bit, and then from there I transitioned into HR, and I said, oh, that sounds interesting. So um, I interviewed for a, diff a couple of different recruiting jobs, and I ended up at an agency, and I ended up really loving it, to my surprise. Um, it was really, it was really fast paced. I got exposure to a lot of really big name organizations. I got a part, I got to be a part of building something at all of these large organizations. I made a lot of relationships and it was just a really exciting environment. I enjoyed the pace of it. Um, you know, from there, I, I felt like I had hit a wall. Um, I felt like uh, there wasn't, when you're working in a small agency, there isn't a lot of room to grow into something larger. So I ended up going to the corporate side and ended up in corporate recruiting. Um, at NBC, I've been there for three years now. Um, it's been a really great experience, and I use my psychology degree every day, and I use my liberal arts edu education every day. You'd be completely surprised the skills that you gain from your education that it 
from your education that are transferable into, into the real world. Um, one, psychology focused, you learn so much about analyzing people's behavior, about understanding behavior. Um, every single day I have to figure out and understand people's skills. Where do they fit in in the organization? Um, are they the right culture fit for the team, for the company as a whole? Even though I support finance, I lead finance across NBC, every single business that I support is completely different, even though they're all finance-related positions. So it's every single day I have to really understand individual personalities, their skills, and where they can fit in our company and where they can grow long-term. Um, Aside from that, just you learn communication skills, you learn writing skills. Every single day I have to talk to CFOs, I have to talk to the global heads of groups. I have to be able to articulate sentences in a way that you know, sounds coherent. So you know, being able to take the writing skills that you use here and bring them into the corporate world is really important. Um, you learn, I think one of the most important things that I gained from Fairfield, being in a small school environment, you gain more skills than you can possibly imagine. You get involved in group projects. You have the ability to do that because your class size is so much smaller. You're doing group projects, you're working on teams. Guess what, you do the exact same thing when you're in corporate America. You're broken out into groups, you're learning how to work together with other people. There are gonna be people that you know are difficult to work with and you know there are gonna be so many different personalities that you, that you come into when you work in the real world and I think you learn how to deal with those things and that, that starts here with your education. So I think that's really important. Just basic skills, being able to use Excel and PowerPoint, all of those things you need to use every day. So you would be, everything that you're doing here every single day, you will need to use those skills in the real world. So just remember that. You might think as you're sitting in art history class or religion class, when am I ever gonna need to use this again? Everything that you gain in those classes, you eventually build upon in the real world. So. I honestly feel like I gained so much from my, my, um, my education here. I, I feel like I use everything that I learned here on a day-to-day -day basis, and that was with all of my jobs, even until I, you know, I finally found one that stuck and that you know, I made a career out of, but um, in ad sales, I, I used my, my skills every single day, and even as an assistant as well. So um, I think that what you're doing here is great, and you'll definitely be able to use your skills in the future. Lauren. Hello, everyone. So I am Lauren Short. I graduated in 1991. I was also a psychology major, and I believe I was the first graduating class of art history majors here. Is that right, Dr. Schwab? Yeah. Or, so, or so, ish. Um, but yeah. <laughs> um, and let's see. Um, I guess I'm here to tell you that. Uh, an, an arts degree at Fairfield translates into the business world. Um, that I think that's my bottom line, really. That, and, and nobody's more surprised than me, to be totally honest, mm -hmm. that, of, of kind of where I've ended up. Um, I was definitely sort of a purist upon leaving Fairfield U that um, I wanted to be fully focused in the arts, and I um, moved to New York, went back to, uh, was going to um, CUNY, for my art history master's degree, and was working for an art dealer, and then I received an offer for a position doing public relations and working for the chairman at <coughs> Tiffany. So, um, thought that that I would gain some skills that would be useful. So, moved there. It was a wonderful place to work. I loved luxury marketing. I realized I loved event planning. I loved etiquette, stationary invitations. Um, and if I go back far enough, I plan the prom. I, you know, this is like, this has been in my blood forever, so it made sense. But um, so also worked in community affairs at Tiffany, and how they, they get, you know, barraged with requests for community support and helping to wade through that and make sense of that was part of my job, and it's something that I've continued to do in all of my positions since. Um, from Tiffany, um, I... Uh, moved to Christie's because it was closer to my ultimate dream, which was to get back into the arts. And um, I was actually there for 10 years. Um, I ran the events group, um, helped to build a sponsorship program, a site rental program. I helped to make um, events a revenue generator instead of just a, uh, a, a budget line. 
I guess. And that was, it was great fun. I was absolutely living my dreams. I absolutely loved my job. Um, but it was 24 seven kind of life um, and uh, tons of travel. And um, there was this little bank that <laughs> moved into our building. And uh, I started advising them on things they could sponsor at Christie's and, and things that they could do in New York. It was, they, New York was their first community where they were going to um, make a mark on the East Coast. And they asked me to join them. And I, I thought they were crazy for asking, to be totally honest. And, and they really had to convince me that the relationship building skills and the communication skills and the event skills um, and the network that I'd built at Christie's was transferable to this sort of fledgling bank. It wasn't fledgling on the West Coast. It was quite developed on the West Coast, but we were just starting it up on the East Coast. So anyway, let's just fast forward. That was 12 years ago. Um, I now um, am the vice president of marketing, corporate marketing for the East Coast, and I do the retail marketing for the whole company um, in our 70 offices. And um, all I can tell you is I love my job. I have so much fun. Um, I get to work on our strategic partnerships and community support. Um, I do a lot of public relations and events and um, client business building, but um, the thing that I really love the most is, is relationship building and so um, strategic partnership building. So I work with Christie's all the time. I work with Lincoln Center. I keep saying I want my own desk there because I'm at Lincoln Center three times a day. Um, the Joyce Theater, the New Museum, the Institute of Contemporary Art in Boston. Um, it, it, it kind of goes on and on, and these are organizations that either are clients of our bank or that we, where we fund programming there, but it is so exciting to be able to, you know, make, make programs happen, and I still call Kathy and say, is this a good idea? What do you think of this exhibition? <laughs> Should I be doing this? And um, I have to tell you, so, so one of the wonderful things you have here is a, a network of professors that care about you now and will continue to care about you till the end of time and will remember you and know your face and name and you will you can be intertwined with them you know forever and that that's really special I don't honestly know anybody else that has that kind of relationship with their undergrad professors um, uh, I live in Southport Connecticut now and it's funny I see Philip Dr. Elisoff coming and going and at the pizza place and, you know, we, we've maintained a friendship and a um, sort of advisory relationship where he helps me with making decisions as well. So um, I, uh, I feel really lucky to be doing what I'm doing and what I want you to know is that one thing that I think Fairfield does for you is it helps you develop your sense of what I call practic practical creativity. Um, I, you know, please don't ask me to write a sonnet. That's not the kind of creativity that I have. Um, but I can figure things out. I can be resourceful. I can keep the, a project on track. I can, um, I, it's, it's, for me, it's more problem solving skills or connecting dots. A lot of great networking happens here and I think those skills are really honed here. Um, I want people to know that you really build your job. I don't think you wa anyone walks into sort of like the perfectly prefabbed position. I think that you um, take a, a, a job that you think sounds exciting and then you prove yourself and you get given more responsibilities that are in your lane and you get, uh, it, you sort of discard things that are not so much for you. And eventually you wind up being really, um, you know, sort of defined by your job and de jobs defined by, is, is you too. I don't know how to explain that, but it, you know, it, it really, you, you become sort of enmeshed in your role. And um, I guess that's the most important thing I want people to know is that you pick things up along the way and then you ultimately get to the spot where you're meant to be and um, where you can add the most value. I just wanted to, to note, there's, so Google hiring the, the talent group, they call that smart creative. So I think there's a name for it. Yeah, there is. Okay. They, they have a name. <laughs> just to let you know, they have a name. For, so you've hit exactly what they look for, as well. I is think the that's smart something creative. that Fairfield does for yeah. for all of us. I really do. Dating. Do you guys out there in the audience have any questions for our panelists? Not one. <laughs>
sounds very interesting. Um, I'm graduating personally with a film and TV production major, which is totally freaking me out. Um, <laughs> this takes more people and jobs. But anyway, how do you think you could transition? What is the transition? How should I approach transitioning into business possibly? Um, I kind of feel like you had an interesting path, but in general, what advice would you give to people um, facing that challenge? I think. Internships are super important. I've hired permanently the last three or four interns that I had. Um, it's obviously a great chance for you to test the waters and see if you like the group and the company, but also for the group around you to understand your work ethic. Um, I think, you know, it's, it's funny. Um, you know, here I am in this business uh, role, and I did not take any business classes undergrad at Fairfield. Uh, nor have I hired anyone with any banking background, which is interesting. You know, I, I keep going back to the, um, well, to the Fairfield well and to the Christie's well and the Tiffany well. But I, I find that for what I do, people with luxury marketing, have it, it, that's really transferable, or people with great, um, with, with nonprofit background. Um, one of the women that uh, I hired from Fairfield U went on and got her master's degree in arts administration and now is working with me at the bank has been for nine years and it's totally transferable skill set to what we do so i guess what i i guess what i'm saying is keep stay close to alumni get to know alumni do internships as much as you can i i keep coming back to fairfield when i hire because i know that there it's a community of people where there'll be this sort of automatic um recognition somehow, that we'll just be on the same page very quickly, you know. I, Fairfield people have, in my experience, a great work, work ethic. When I hire people at the bank, everyone asks me, where do you find your people? They just work so hard and they're not precious. They're really just solid, you know. So that's that's the word on the street about Fairfield U graduates, so you should know that. But, um, uh, and I guess think about the specific skills and don't worry too much about where you're going to apply them. Does that make sense? Like, uh, my skills would be probably applicable to marketing for any any kind of um, company, and your skills, I think, would would be too. I mean, there are millions of places where you could apply them. Um, so it's about making contacts in different types of companies and taking baby steps. I think toward what you really think you want to do. Nick. I, I really think it's about internships in your first few positions. I think you have to get into a company and show them that you can write and show them that you can communicate. You have to become a person and not a resume. I, I, does everyone else agree with that? I, 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 I would also add, don't pretend to be something you aren't all yet. Make your cover letter extremely short but snappy and smart. The resume should be one page. I remember when I first did my first resume, it was like three pages, and I hadn't even gotten out of Fairfield U yet, and I was like, this is mental. So <laughs> people will look at those things that are hiring. I've hired about 24 people over the last few years, and you get about 10 seconds, and you need to make that count. Once you get into the interview, make a good impression. Um, I'll just chime in here quickly. As somebody who does this every single day, I hire people every single day at NBC Universal. I think... As somebody graduating, well, you're still in school, so one thing you want to just really focus on, you don't necessarily need to have a degree in something that you want to do. Something to help you give a little bit of an edge is getting internship experience is really, really helpful. Um, it's obviously very competitive when you graduate. All the graduates are graduating at the same time. Everybody's going for the same positions. There's a couple of things that really helps you stand out. One, you know, trying to get internships in something that you think you might want to do is really helpful. Two, the biggest mistake I see all the time is people don't take their interviews very seriously and they don't put any time or effort into the organization or what they can contribute to the organization and they treat it as just any other interview without doing your research and without 
actually coming prepared for your interviews, that's your foot in the door. And I don't think that you necessarily need to have a specific degree. I think it's how, you know, put take the time to put together a really great resume. You want to make sure there's no spelling errors or anything like that. See if you can get internship experience in something that you want to do. I think that initial experience is really helpful to give you an edge if you don't necessarily have a degree in something that you want to do. And also networking as well. You have a huge network of Fairfield alum. I'm sure you have plenty of other avenues as well where you can utilize that too. Just getting in front of people and having conversations and letting people know what you're interested in, you never know what that can lead to. I think the, in the, I agree with everything that's being said, um, and internships is a particular thing that's good and important, but also broaden that to just do something cool, like do something fun, do something interesting, like, I mean, whatever it is that you do that's interesting, right? And then do it well, do it, right? big um, type of thing. So whether it's, you know, whether maybe even as a student going to China and doing something interesting there that, like, it doesn't have to, you know, whatever it is, it's your life. And just apply, like, so people can then see you're just applying whatever it is that you're applying to whatever it is that you think is, you know, that's cool. And then they're going to hear it. It'll come through. Um, so internships are a way to do that, right? This is also a part of just get the experience of what is a job like? Right? That you know, you're there to uh, do something and produce something for, for them. And if you spend time in an interview talking about what you're going to get out of it, and you're, you're missing the point of what you're doing yeah. and going to work. Um, but it doesn't have to be a job. Like, it can just be cool stuff. Like, I mean, if you're a painter, like, what do you paint? What talk, like, talk to me about you know, what that's like. Where have you visited? Where have you gone? And you know, these types of things. So I think mostly you want people who are you know, thinkers and interesting and doing things and then have actually done it. Right, as opposed to a lot of ideas yeah. about what they'd like to do and so forth. Like what, like I, I, would, I would second uh, what, what Aaron said. Um, so I followed a very different path in that I, you know, just left the country. Um, and <laughs> just like, I mean, I just avoided the whole job market uh, <laughs> after I graduated. And, you know, I didn't really work in an office office uh, for, you know, eight years, I guess. Um, you know, I, I really moved around space to space to space. Um, and I found myself in many different organizations, many different places. Um, and I was passionate and committed and excited um, and, you know, I didn't know, really understand or know what it was like to come into an office every day until I am where I am today. But that said, so now working in consulting, um, I have many offices and I have many spaces. And uh, to be honest, my work starts early and my work ends very late. Um, and you balance so many things in the career that I'm in now or the space I'm in that uh, I hope to really never know the, you know, that, that struggle that'll happen, um, I think, to many of us as we, as we begin our career. But that said, uh, I have aspired to um, pass what we, they call the LAX test. I don't know if you've heard of this before. But there are some of the big uh, companies out there, especially in the IT world, um, so they call it, or the airport test, right? They call it the JFK test. Uh, but basically the idea is that if you're there with uh, the COO or somebody of a similar, you know, accord or uh, stature, that they could spend six hours with you stuck in an airport and you'd keep their attention and you'd remain interesting. Uh, it's a tough test, right? And uh, it's not, not easy, but it's, you know, you are genuine, you're passionate, you're curious, uh, you're smart. Um, and you have committed yourself to something um, for some reason, and you hold values. And I think, that, I think that this university cherishes that and certainly helped me build a lot of those kind of assets early. Um, but, you know, so I, I have to apologize. I'm not as good at the, the really strategic kind of steps out of college just because I, I went in a very different direction. But... Um, but I would say that, you know, no matter what you do, um, the idea that you remain curious, that you're smart, that you're flexible, um, and that you have some level of analytic skills as well as passion, uh, which I might have already mentioned.
but it deserves two times. The, the uh, <laughs> I think that all of those things are key. Um, um, the, Oh, <laughs> Just kind of want to chime in real quick. Um, you know, one thing that I, I was worried about the same exact thing, you know, graduating. I'm in communication, so what, how am I going to do this? I can talk well, speak well to people, but uh, what else? Um, one thing to really remember is that Fairfield always encouraged their students to get involved. Do what you can, whether it's a leadership position, whether it's an, you know, an activity here and there, whatever it is, use that and, and really hone in on it. You know, whether it's in interviews or, you know, first interaction, networking, whatever it may be. Um, during my interview with Indeed, you know, great, I had sales experience in my past internship. They, that was great. Uh, they wanted to know what I did as an RA. How did I incorporate, you know, the artistic ability that I did with billboards and, um, you know, programs? How did I incorporate that and how can I relate that to work today? Because at the end of the day, work is working with people, it's speaking with one another, it's, you know, building projects, it's, it's everything that you've done at Fairfield, um, and it directly translates to the real world. So keep that in mind too, you can definitely pull your, your past experiences in leadership positions that you've had from Fairfield and really translate that into you know, the next step. I think that's really important because I, I think you may not realize that you're forging relationships now that will influence, I mean, maybe, maybe you are realizing this, but that, that I don't think I realized it when I was undergrad, that you're forging relationships now that will influence your career path down the road. And um, I still call Kathy Schwab when I need to hire somebody because I ask Kathy for her shining star. Who's like the ace of the slide library? Who's the, who's pitching in with you in the department, and that's who we give the internship opportunity to. And, you know, I'm watching you doing this in, in the evening, you're gaining experience, you're, you, you know, you're using your undergrad to get experience that will help you build your resume, you know, and that, that's, the, these relationships you're building now really aren't meaningful. But, but if you haven't uh, um, had any good internships, and you haven't gone to China, <laughs> and you're you're there with an otherwise very dull personality. Um, the, I'm saying effectively what everyone has already said in, in many different ways. I hire every single one of the people I hire. I, I generally hire for one reason, and that's because they're giant, unapologetic geeks. And in the interviews, they completely geek out. And that is why I hire them because they they telegraph to me that whatever silly project they did that was their senior thesis or uh, some paper that they got especially excited about, they telegraph how important it was to them and they will, if they're doing their job, they're going to describe how complicated it was, how unique their perspective was, even if it wasn't especially unique. They, they're gonna do their best to demonstrate that to me. And that is one of the most important things in, in any interview, it's just, is give it 110%, completely geek out, be excited about those, those silly gotcha questions they ask you. And, yeah. Well, I want to thank these remarkable panelists who have come to us, our wonderful and distinguished alumni. Let's all give them a round of applause, please. <laughs> and thank you all for coming. Uh, we will take snippets of this and uh, build various small videos into our website so that those students who did not have the opportunity to come today will have in the future opportunities to see how it is that one can come out with a liberal arts major or two, not go to China and <laughs> or go to China and at the same time really excel. And so thank you very much for your participation today, really. Thank you.